Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to SQL Data Discovery and Classification with SQL Server Management Studio. I'm Joey D'Antoni. I'm Principal Consultant at Denny Cherry & Associates Consulting. I'm a Microsoft Data Platform MVP and have been for five years. And today we're going to talk about a, a feature that's come into a, a SQL Server uh, tooling, uh, both Azure uh, SQL Database and SQL Server, in probably about the last year to kind of help us classify and, and understand what data we have in our database. And, this, is, this tool is going to make some assumptions, and it's not perfect, but we'll talk about what it can do and how it can help you get started. But the first thing I'd like to start out with is about a story, and I always like to ask people, do you really know what data is in your databases? And I have the story of this consulting gig where I got brought in to understand, to help a customer understand you know, some performance problems they were having. And in the course of, of understanding the performance problems, I came across a SQL Server agent job that was titled something something SSN job. And I was like, hmm, that seems a little odd. I should look at that. And this job was doing, building a report against a table that I, I further found that had 400,000 social security numbers and all the other personally identifiable information you would need to steal all of those people's identities. That's kind of bad enough that data wasn't encrypted or anything like that. But wait, there's more. Uh, this organization had a few SQL servers, so they had four SQL servers in their environment. And they had, in their infinite wisdom, linked them all together using linked servers. And if you're not familiar with linked servers, there are several, it basically just means you can call a query to another server uh, using a four-part name of server, database, schema, object. However, what they had done, uh, there are several ways you can do security context in uh, linked servers. And they had set their security context to SA. So anybody who logged into any server in their environment had access as SA to all of the data in all of the databases in this entire environment. But wait, there's more. They had a reporting database on one of the servers where domain user had DBO access. So basically, domain users were SA in their entire SQL Server environment. This was fantastic, and I, I had to write a report and get our lawyer to review it before I handed it over to them. But you don't want to be that person. The nice thing about this feature, and I'm not going to say it's perfect or it's, it's going to solve all the world's problems, it's a good way, if you're a database administrator, to kind of cover your own, uh, protect yourself. Uh, because you may have sensitive data, especially data that's in ISV systems. Everybody loves ISV systems, and they always use best practices when they write code, right? No. Uh, so this lets you quickly identify the, the sorts of data that are in those systems, uh, classify it, and gives you a nice report that you can hand off to you know, your management to say, hey, we should be thinking about protecting this data. In a really well-organized organization, this might feed up into your data architecture solution, and you might be able to take that a step further. But if you just go with the bare minimum, you're protecting yourself in case of a data breach, because you can say, hey, I had reported this data. The main reason why we got this feature and Microsoft put a lot of effort into data classification is GDPR. So uh, if, you're, if you're in the US or, or not, or European, uh, you've probably heard of GDPR. It's the General Data Protection Regulation in Europe. Uh, this applies to any, any company that holds any data for any citizen of the EU. So you could really be anywhere in the world and be subject to, to this regulation. Uh, one of the things uh, SQL Server does here is check for columns that are GDPR sensitive. Uh, we can also modify this so we can include our own checks. Um, and then finally, it, it helps us understand our own sensitive data. Uh, a lot of, in a lot of cases, you, know, you don't necessarily know what your developers or especially ISV vendors have put in into your database. So you could have very sensitive data and you might not be aware of it. So you might want to report back to them that, hey, we have all the, we're storing 400,000 social security numbers and everybody can access this data. We might want to encrypt that column. Uh, so it will give us suggestions like that. So we're going to look at a couple of demos here. The first thing we're going to look at is SQL Server Management Studio. And then we're going to look at uh, Azure, data, Azure SQL Database, because both, uh, both of these solutions have a similar solution. So first off, we're, we're going to look at Management Studio. Uh, you need SQL Server Management Studio 17.5 or higher. If you're not familiar, uh, Microsoft switched to releasing SQL Server Management Studio on a monthly build cycle. It is completely independent uh, from the version of SQL Server you're using. So if you install SQL Server 2016 or higher, 
you won't get a new installation of Management Studio. And in fact, it won't install. You'll, ha you'll have to go to a download site and download it separately. That's a good thing, because it allows the tools team to kind of develop faster. And especially with some of these Azure services, uh, we, have, we need to have the ability, or they need to have the ability to write code pretty quickly to adjust to new features. So we get support for new features faster, and we get some cool new, new tools. So where we, where we identify this feature, and I'm gonna talk about two different things here for a second, is here we see we have data discovery under task, and this is run at a database level, and we also have a vulnerability assessment. I'll run the vulnerability assessment first, because this is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, this is kind of a broader, just security check. Let me zoom out so I can click OK. And then we'll zoom back. Uh, and here I'm, I, I see that this, this instance, fa or this database failed uh, six checks, one of which is considered to be high risk. So this is a, a, just a pretty simple set of SQL scripts that Microsoft has run to analyze my database here. So I don't have TD enabled. Uh, public has views and I can, or uh, roles, and I can see, uh, I can see everything I've passed here. So I'm, I'm pretty good. I just have a, f a few different uh, things that are missing. So one question that, I, that I've seen frequently come up around this is, hey, I manage hundreds of servers. How can I run this? Because this isn't practical to run for each database. And the answer to that question is you can kind of run, what I was doing this morning was trying to run a profiler trace against this code, capture the T-SQL that they're running, and then run that myself. You could potentially scrape this report, but it's gonna be a lot easier if you just capture the T-SQL, run it yourself, and you'll be able to modify it as well. Uh, for example, one of the things when we're gonna run this data discovery and classification, uh, we'll, we'll run classified data here first. And this is gonna take a couple of seconds. So what this is doing is doing a column name search. It's pretty simple, it's not that intelligent, it's not interrogating the data. Uh, it's just looking at column names in English column names only. So if, if you're working on a database that's written in a foreign language like SAP, uh, you may wanna customize the SQL that this report's running just so you can, you, can, uh, you can see that a little further. So if I click here to view the classifications, I see that I have, uh, we've identified things that are account, associated with account to be financial. Uh, and we have a default sensitivity level of confidential. Uh, we have a number of sensitivity levels, so we have public, uh, general, confidential, uh, highly confidential, confidential GDPR, and highly confidential GDPR. And those are kind of suggestions for where we might want to, uh, to think about encrypting the data. I can also add a classification here. So if I wanted to say dim customer, uh, birth date, date of birth, and I can say highly confidential because for whatever reason that was more sensitive, I can add that here. And then here if I, if I uh, save this off, if I, excuse me, click here and say accept selected recommendations, I have pending classification updates at the top and then I can save this and so you may wonder what that, what that, uh, what's gonna happen here. So, so far everything we've been doing is just a management studio experience. Uh, if we go in back into our database now, and we'll look at dem account, because that's an easy one, and it should be at the top. And we go over here to extended properties. Uh, actually, let me, account key is what I needed. If we look at the extended properties for this column, uh, we see that we have a kind of a mapping here. So we have a, a little bit of a schema and internal tables. So we have sys information type ID, which is a GUID. Uh, we see that it's a financial column, and we see that it's labeled. So this, is, uh, this feature just takes advantage of the extended properties feature in SQL Server. So it's something you could have done yourself for a long time. Uh, I mean, I know we, in some of my older jobs, we've used uh, 
extended properties to kind of help us define some of the metadata around systems and, and better understand what's there. It's not something I see frequently used. And would, if you really, really want to take advantage of this feature, you need to build some level of uh, framework around this to gather, to do, your, do all of your assessments and then pull in the data you've gathered from uh, your various databases and, and share that. Ideally, this is going to go to some sort of data governance team that's going to manage that. Uh, and this, this will take you to the, have the ability to, uh, to do things like understanding what columns need to be encrypted or masked. So uh, one of the features that got added to uh, SQL Server 2016 was uh, dynamic data masking, which is a presentation layer feature. It's not so much a security feature, but it will prevent end users from seeing data they shouldn't see. Uh, we can also encrypt data. This is the report that SQL Server is going to give us, uh, and this is just a breakdown on the number of classified columns. So we see 67 out of our 413 columns are classified. Six, about half of our tables have confidential data or sensitive data, and we have six unique information types. So we see contact info, date of birth, financial name, national ID, and networking. So if I expand this, this will just show me what we've added uh, and how we can, we can adjust this. So this gives us a, a nice report to show. Uh, this is kind of the one thing you'd want to hand off to your management uh, just to protect yourself. Uh, and we have a similar experience in Azure SQL database. So interestingly, this, is, uh, this feature is just built in and included in Management Studio. But in Azure SQL database, it's part of the advanced threat protection package, which costs uh, $15 per month per server. Uh, it does give us some. Uh, extra features, so we have like SQL injection protection that's built into uh, Azure SQL database in this solution. Uh, but likewise, we have a similar experience. This is just in the Azure portal. Uh, so if I, I'll go back here, because I had changed some things. So uh, I have data, this, this is part of that package. So I have data discovery and classification. I also have the same vulnerability assessment and I have threat detection, which is a little bit different. So if I drill into my data classification and preview, uh, this is a similar but slightly different database. This is an older version of the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. And our Wi-Fi is a little slow, so we're kind of rolling here. This is going to give us similar information. Uh, we can implement it uh, within our, our cloud-based database just like we can implement in our on-prem database. Nothing really from a technical perspective is that different about the way this is implemented in Azure SQL DB. So here we found 62 columns with recommendations. And if we zoom in, we can see we have mostly the same columns, DEM account key, uh, financial data, confidential, and we see our, our sensitivity label. So if we similar experience, we can accept selected recommendations. We can also add our own classifications. So as I mentioned, this feature is by no means perfect. The biggest, I think, gap is that it, it's English only. So if you're working with a database that has columns that are not in English, uh, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna fix them. However, what you can do is you know, edit the, grab the code that, SQL, that the tool's running and add your own column names to it. Uh, I'd like to see this solution open source a little bit. I mean, it's, it's all about open source. You can capture the T-SQL, so you can do that. But it's, it's not a full open source solution. But it would be nice if people could kind of build a database of keywords. The other thing I'd like to see that's not here uh, is some data inspection. So I'd like to see pattern, like regex pattern matching and data. We do have that in, if we go back here in SQL databases, With dynamic data masking, we do, get, uh, we do get some fields that we recommend masking. So this is not just based on uh, account name or a column name, but it's based on data patterns. So uh, this is something where a SQL Server has looked in and said, hey, we see this data pattern. Uh, it's in, in, in this case, it's a combination of account name and, and data, data lookup. So uh, both, both of these are doing kind of a similar thing. So nice stuff that I would like to have, but this feature is kind of a good start, and you can classify your data pretty quickly and easily, and it's, it's not something that's 
The best part about it is it's something you can run. There's, there's not going to be long lasting. It's not going to change anything in your data. You don't have to worry about breaking anything in an app, like with encryption. Uh, you can just run this against any database. It's even something I'd feel comfortable running in a production environment. Uh, there's going to be minimal impact because you're really just updating metadata. You're not updating any actual data. So the way our workflow is going to work here is we're going to discover what data we have. And I, I think this discovery part's probably the most important for ISV apps. Uh, you never know what your, vend your software renders are storing and how, how they're storing that data. Uh, so it's always kind of nice, especially I've always felt this way as a DBA who worked in healthcare for a long time, uh, that I really want to know what my ISV apps are storing and how they're storing it, whether they're encrypting the data or not. Because uh, if they're doing stupid stuff and somebody ha gets our data through you know, a report or something, uh, I'm going to be the one who gets yelled at. And then classifying. Uh, classifying is where the process of applying those labels. So this is important, especially if you're subject to regulation like GDPR. Uh, but it's also just kind of important for building a hierarchy of what you want to do with your data. Uh, and then labeling those columns. The kind of thing that's missing from here, though, is encryption. So especially if you're in a shop that is building applications and you're doing this, this is where you should go back to your development team and say, hey, we have this data in this column. We have credit card numbers and they're not encrypted, or we have date of birth and it's not encrypted, blood type, any, any of those sensitive things that should be encrypted. Uh, that's where you should go back to the development team and talk to them about that. And that's probably the biggest, uh, the biggest gap I see in a lot of applications. And then finally, this gives you the ability to report on your sensitive data. So you can, one of the things you could potentially do, since this is your database, is uh, build, a, build a report that goes against sys columns, looks for those extended properties, grabs those extended properties, and then does a cross join to, uh, to see if any of those columns are encrypted. Uh, and you, then you can have a report on sensitive data that's unencrypted or unmasked in our environment. Uh, this gives you a lot of power and control. Uh, it doesn't really protect your data as much as I'd like, but that's kind of the responsibility of your developers because encrypting data is not just a, a database operation. The application has to be involved in it. Does anyone have any questions about the feature? We have about two minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, it's not changing. The question was, is it you're just using extended properties? Yeah, it's not changing the DDL. So it's just using your extended properties to take advantage of that, which makes it, which is good, because it, it makes it safe and it makes it easy to report against. Yeah. The application does not want? Yeah, so the question was, the application is not encrypting that column. What do you do? Uh, you yell. Uh, so this gives you, like, here's, here's what I kind of think about that. If, if your application's not encrypting a column and you've reported it as sensitive, A, you've got, as the database administrator, you've now got plausible deniability because uh, you've reported it up through the chain. Uh, but B, you've raised the visibility of that. So this is kind of all about raising the visibility of your sensitive data and kind of you can use this. You have an official looking document that says this data should be encrypted uh, and you've identified it. Any other questions? Well, thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your conference. Thanks.